Okay, guys. We're back in the saddle here. So, today what we want to talk about is... Multiplying and dividing radical expressions. Um, today we're going to focus on uh, two main points. Uh, we're going to multiply radicals today. And we're going to learn how to rationalize denominators with one radical term. So, let's start off by multiplying radicals. Alright, so they're going to talk about the FOIL method here on this video. Uh, actually, I'm going to discuss the FOIL method. And, you, you know, as I've talked about in class, I really don't care for FOIL because uh, when we start to get into things later with binomials by trinomials, it creates another method. So I like to use the distributive property, which I'll show you on the edgy creation uh, video that I'll be creating. So anyway, we're going to talk about FOIL from, uh, this comes from section 5.4. Uh, if you need to, you need to go back and look again. But basically, um, FOIL is using first, outside, inside, last right that's what that means first outside inside last so if we take a look here at um, this problem the first one we have we're going to multiply the first two so two times one is two the outside two times the square root of five is well plus two square root of five square root of three times one those are the inside ones one times square root of three Plus, we would then do the square root of 15. Oops. Okay. Since um, we can't simplify any of those, basically, that's what you're going to end up with. Okay. So this method really isn't bad. There's nothing wrong with it. I just prefer distributive. Anyway, over here we have 4 plus the square root of 5 times 4 minus the square root of 5. Remember, this is called, if you, I don't know if you recall this, but this is called the difference, right? We can use the difference of two squares methods. All right. So, so basically, you can square the first terms twice the product of the two, or excuse me, and then square the last terms, okay? So, you get four times four is 16, minus four square root of five, plus four square root of five, minus five. Well, you end up with 11, right? Because these two terms are gonna cancel each other out. So you could use the difference of two squares there, just to multiply, square four, get 16, and Square the square root of 5, and that gives you 5. And then you subtract them. 16 minus 5 is 11. Okay, the last one is to square these, right? So um, the square root, perfect square method of, uh, that we talked about, squaring binomials. Square the first terms, all right? Oh, by the way, there is a difference between two squares there. So, um, Square the first term, 13, right? Square root of 13 times itself is 13. Twice the products of the two terms. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 times square root of 13, right? You're going to end up with those two there. Plus 4, square the last term. So you combine those now, and you get 17 minus 4 square root, square root of 13. Okay, over here we have the same situation. This is going to be a difference of two squares. So it's 16 minus 4 cubed root of 7, right? My plus 4 cubed root of 7. And that's going to be the cubed root of 49 because you're going to end up with uh, squaring that, okay? So cubed root of 7 times the cubed root of 7 is cube root of 7 squared, which is 49. 
Okay, so over here we have square root of r plus square root of s plus this times the quantity square root of r minus square root of s. And r has got to be greater than or equal to 0, and s has got to be greater than or equal to 0. So that's a difference of squares. Square the first term minus square the last term. This becomes just r minus s. Okay? If you recognize these, it does allow you to get them done a lot quicker. But you got to put some work and time and effort into the homework. Okay, now we want to rationalize denominators with one radical term. So, basically, we're going to rationalize each denominator. Now, under the rules of algebra, this is not allowed. Okay, you can never have an answer with a radical in the denominator. So, how do we get rid of it? Well, you multiply by 1. Okay, and one is what's ever in the denominator. So since the square root of 11 is in the denominator, oops, let's erase all that ink, we can multiply by this was just nothing more than 1. Square root 11 over square root 11. So what ends up happening here, you'll see, is that you end up with 5 square root 11. 11 square root 11 times the square root of 11 right here gives us 11. So in this problem, the next one, b, we've got to get the square root of 5 out of the bottom. So we're going to multiply it by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5, which is, in effect, like multiplying by 1, as you can see right here. So 5 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 5 becomes 5 square root of 30. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. Now, we can simplify this here. Take, pay attention to this. 5 over 5, we can get rid of that, and we end up with just the square root of 30, okay? So you can't go to sleep on this stuff. You need to pay attention to what you're doing. Negative 8 over the square root of 18. Now, if we can simplify this, uh, we need to, all right? So um, you can do it earlier, or you can do it later. So let's assume, for discussion's sake, we're going to do it later here. So we're going to multiply by the square root of 18 on both the numerator and the denominator. And we end up with negative 8 times the square root of 18 over 18. Now, because 9 is a perfect square and it goes into the square root of 18, so that becomes, in effect, negative 8 times the square root of 9 times 2 over 18, which is equal to negative 24, right? The square root of 9 is 3, so that comes out negative 8. So over here, I'm going to draw over here to tell you a little bit of demonstration of what happens. This becomes a negative 8 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 over 18, right? And then we know that the square root of 9 is 3. Excuse me. Oh, boy, look what I got on this. Get rid of this. There we go. So 8 times the square root of 9. Well, not the square root of 9 is 3. 8 times 9. 8 times 3. <laughs> And it's negative 8. Oh, wow, man. Here we go. Negative 8 times the square root of 9, is, which is 3. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24 times the square root of 2 over 18. And then we can reduce that, right? 6 goes into both, negative 24 and 18. So we reduce that. And we get negative 4, square root of 2, over 3. So all those things we were working on since we've been in grammar school, reducing fractions, we still have to do. It doesn't go away. All right. So we have to split this. Now this is negative square root of 8 over square root of 45. So you're going to multiply. Well, let's see how they decide to do it here. I know how I would change it a little bit differently. So... All right, we're back. The dog wanted to come in. Anyway, um, so they're going to go ahead and factor that out now. Let's factor out the perfect squares. So this becomes negative 2 square root of 2 over 3 square root of 5. Again, you're going to multiply by the square root of 5 times over the square root of 5. 
So now we're up top here, and that gives us negative 2 square root of 10 over 3 times 5, and then we simplify as 2 square root of 10, negative, whole, the whole thing's negative, 2 square root of 10 over 15. Don't make the mistake, do not reduce this, oops. Do not be reducing this. There's no reason for that. All right. That is not a. Uh, this here is not reducible. Don't. Don't reduce those. Don't think that this five goes into both. I'm going to divide that out. Do not do that. All right. So square root of 200 k to the sixth over y to the seventh, and y has got to be greater than zero. So, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to break it into two sections. Square root of 200 over 200k to the sixth over y to the seventh. Square root of y to the seventh. Now, when we factor this, keep this in mind. Any even number of, um, or any indices, all right, that fit into the radicand. So, if you look here, we have y to the seventh. Well, 6 is a, right here, 6 divides evenly by 2. So all you're going to do is you're going to break this into two sections. You're doing the same thing over here. k to the 6 is k cubed squared. Okay. So now they're going to factor all that out. Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of k to the 6 is k cubed times the square root of 2. This is over y cubed. The square root of y to the 6 is y cubed times the square root of y. Now we would multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of y over the square root of y, which is equal to 1. So once we simplify that, we end up with 10k cubed square root 2y over y cubed. Now here, y. It's square root of y times the y square root of y is y to the first times y cubed is y to the fourth. Okay, so you got some problems that will be assigned, and um, I'll also put up some further examples, uh, another attachment. So uh, have a great day, stay healthy, do your studies, learn your material. This is a great opportunity for you to grow and develop and um, get better. As a, as a math student. So have a good day and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. Bye.